Hey, what's up? I'm Katie Bang and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks so much for joining us. And if you're not, thank you so much for being a part of my family. I appreciate you more than you know. We got Taquito, burrito, taquito, Dorito right here. He just got surgery and he's doing good, so. But on another note, let's talk about if Dobermans turn on their owners. I think I should disclaim by saying, one, I got into dog training because I had a crazy Doberman and she's great now, I still have her, her name's Jazzy, she's wonderful and we are on the same level, so I'll take it. And two, there's a myth going around, or a rumor, I guess, that Dobermans are born and they're normal, but then one day they snap and this is caused because their brain continues to grow and eventually one day their brain's just too big and they snap because it got too big and it doesn't fit in their skull and that's that. So, I had Dobermans and then I heard this and I'm like, hmm, what's gonna happen? So I did a bunch of research and I literally could not find any like facts or evidence of this being the case. I think we need to look into the Doberman history. So Dobermans were bred in Germany by a tax collector and he bred them to be very agile and athletic and protective, but also to be very attentive and into their owner's emotions. So with that being said, Dobermans are bred to be super into their owners and very attached like Velcro dogs and very into like what their owner's feeling and their owner's emotions at the, that state of time. And Dobermans are one of the most intelligent dogs there are. I work with all types of dogs. I do behavioral modification. And so I work with a lot of aggressive breeds or aggressive breeds. So they say they're not very aggressive. Um, and because of that, what we do is work with pit bulls and rottweilers and dobermans and all of those dogs. We also work with chihuahuas and maltese and poodle doodles, but we work with a lot of different dogs. And one thing I've noticed from working with dobermans is that they're very intellectual. So dogs are very instinctual, but dobermans are one of the breeds that thinks through more than most breeds. So most breeds are instinctual in the fact that they just react. They aren't thinking through their actions. It's just a reaction to the environment they're in and the energy they're with. Where one thing I've noticed from one raising a puppy doberman and two having an older one is they are more thoughtful about their actions. So they are instinctual still, but they're one of the dog breeds that is said to think through their actions more versus just being completely instinctual. So I think we have to note that the fact that a Doberman could just one day change it just doesn't really add up with the, what they were bred for. They were bred to be onto their owner and very protective, but they're very alert and they're not very aloof. It's not like they snap just one day. Everything they do seems very calculated, especially with the females. They are very thoughtful with everything they do. My puppy, Indy, like you can literally watch her and every single second she's like, when she hears a new sound, when she sees a new object, just cause she's taking it in and really thinking about it. So with a less intelligent breed, I feel like it would be easier to be like, oh, they just snap, they don't think it through. But with a breed that really thinks their actions through, it doesn't really make sense that they would turn on their owners. The other thing that we want to take into account is that Dobermans are pack animals. So with that being said, they are bred to follow. So if you're their owner, Honestly, the worst behaved dogs and the ones that I always get worried when I'm working with are the ones that turn on their owners because that means that they have no sense of loyalty and there's something off behavior wise with them. Dogs usually, even if you abuse them, if you're the worst, they are pack animals. So if you work with them and you are their owner, most of the time they're very loyal to you. So it's very hard to make a dog that you feed, that you provide for, turn on you. I believe this myth came from two different things. One is their energy level and two is the perception people have of Dobermans in the public. So let me break this down for you. We'll start with their energy level and their outlet and the way that they are. So Dobermans are very high strung. They were bred to go all day and to be very alert and on it. And I think a lot of people see Dobermans and they're like, oh, they're pretty, but don't realize that Dobermans need an outlet. I was actually joking with my dad the other day. I was like, Indy, my new Doby puppy, she just is not high energy to me. Like I'm like, she's lazy. And my dad was like, Katie, you work her so hard. So for example, I wake up every morning in India and I bike five miles. Then she walks with some of the girls here and then we train her throughout the day. So she's very, very tired by the time the day is coming to an end and just throughout the day. So Dobermans are more high energy and definitely need outlets. For example, I find with some dogs like Oxer and Cider, my two little shepherd mixes, I could walk them and they would be fine for the day. We could go on a hike, they'd be good. The thing about Dobermans 
is that I found since they're more high strung, they need an outlet for their anxiety and for their intense energy. So I always start out with the bike with sprinting and then we'll go for a walk afterwards. So I will say because of Doberman's energy level, I could see a Doberman not getting a proper outlet and then turning on someone or snapping at someone or just using a negative outsource for their energy if they're not being provided with a proper outlet. As far as the perception of the public goes, Dobermans have been used as guard dogs in movies. They're really good at showing their teeth. They're very dramatic and they're very stoic looking. So when a Doberman comes at you, it's a little bit intimidating. I think the other thing is, one thing I've noticed with working with Dobermans is instead of just holding when they fight, like say a Pity or a Roddy or a German Shepherd, police dogs, they'll like get onto the robber or whoever they're going after the criminal and they'll just lock on and hold. Dobermans, to me, I call it the scissor jaw, where they just keep going and they start to get adrenaline and their jaws start going like this and they just rip through flesh. So with that outlook, when you're like watching them fight or you're watching them in a scary movie, that would make sense as to why they get this bad reputation and people could think that they turn on their owners. One thing I've noticed about the girl Dobermans I have is the girls are very protective of me. They always want to be by me and they surround the territory and they're very into like, okay, this is my girl. They're always next to me in bed. They want to make sure no one's touching me. They get really su suspect of people coming up to me if I don't tell them that it's okay, which I personally like. And then the boys are more into the territory. So they were bred to be protective and that's just something that's natural to them. So they do need strong leadership on like, hey, it's not okay to be aggressive or intense right now and you don't need to protect me. So they are one of the dog breeds that you have to bring up with direction and structure, which is pretty much any dog breed that is possible that has the possibility of doing damage because they're big and strong but with that being said i give them all super great direction and i have not had my domain bite a person at all one time they're like the sweetest little babies all in all i think this myth was just made up over time because of a variety of different things but at the end of the day Oh, if I have a family one day, if I'm not single forever, I will always have Dobermans because they're so good with kids. They're amazing family dogs. And I think they have this amazing balance of both protective and very agile, and then very sweet and sensitive goofballs. As far as with a family, I would personally pick a girl because girls are a little bit more like into like where's your space and just more aware of themselves where guys are more goofy and the boy dogs are just so goofy. But I love Dobies. They are one of my favorite breeds and I will always have one probably unless Indy turns out to be a wreck because we're putting a lot of work into her. But yeah, so that's my take on if Dobermans turn on their owners randomly one day and they do not. Um, I have seen a lot of Dobermans at four years old start to show aggression issues. I've seen some at one years old start to show aggression issues, but that is a result of the owners, one, not picking a reliable breeder, or two, not giving the dog a positive outlet. So everything has to be worked through. Not all dogs are the same, and the breed isn't as important as the dog's energy level and their lifestyle and their behaviors, but that's a common theme you'll see. Like people are like, oh, Dobermans, they turn on their owners, and they don't. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you more than you know, and I am interested to see your take on Dobermans. Have you ever met a Doberman? Have you had a good experience with one? Have you had a bad experience with one you've met? I feel like this is such a controversial breed that like when I go out in PetSmart, people are like walking to the other side and like, you don't like her, she's a sweetheart. But with that being said, I'm interested to hear your take. So comment down below, let's have a conversation. I don't have friends, so I literally just talk to the people in the comments. So yeah, talk to me, I love you guys. And I will see you next video. Also, let me know if there's anything you want me to cover. Bye.